Imagine toiling seven days a week for over a decade, only to find out at the end of it you'd essentially been working the whole time for free. This was a common story for Aboriginal stockmen and women like North Queenslander Hans Pearson, who worked as a ringer through the 50s and 60s on Cape York. The Beattie government paid Mr Pearson a few thousand dollars under its reparation scheme back in 2002, but he and his wife both knew that that was far from what they were truly owed. And a chat with a lawyer in Cairns sometime later would eventually see Hans Pearson as the lead claimant on a historic $190 million stolen wages class action that was settled with the state government this week. I tracked Hans Pearson down and I had a chat to him. He's sharing his story with us now. My first job was on the station, cattle station, Starkey. Starkey cattle station, yeah. It must ring and, you know, all station work. Must ring cattle. And I did my first roving trip too the same year to Mariba. The same year. Back then, what were you paid? Uh, you were only 15 years of age. What were you paid that year, do you know? I was paid about three three pounds. But i never seen that three pound. Supposed to be three pound a week, yeah. And uh, I wasn't a bad ringer, you know, a good work. And that, uh, they was paying me seven pound a week, which I didn't see. So they'd tell you, oh, you earned seven pounds this week, but where, where would that money go? Go to the Department of Native Affairs in Brisbane. They're supposed to hold that money on trusts. You know, when you're out on the mustering camp, you don't have days off. You're seven days a week. And when you're driving cattle to Mariba, you know, it's sleeping tw- it- in wet swags and swimming crocodile in the rivers and that, you know, and get to Marie, but you can't go into town. You got no money. After do been on the road for six, seven weeks, get to Marie, you got no money. Where did you stay in the tent till we gave the horses a one week spell and get on their horses, pack horses, and back to the Cape again? How many years do you reckon you worked before you realised that you hadn't earned the money that you were entitled to? Right up to 1964, and uh, the boss of uh, Kalinga told me uh, got my exemption for me, and I got out of the Aboriginal Act. And so that meant you could actually earn your own money, did it? Well, I thought at the time, you know, but uh, still, I wasn't seeing any money. But when we moved to Innisfail, I got my exemption paper, the piece of card they give you, mm. that I'm free from this Aboriginal Act. And a few months after, the policeman called me up to the police station. I knew him from uh, Cooktown, too, that uh, Sergeant Higgerty. He said, I've got a check here for you. Oh, me and the wife was over the moon. Well, those days, you could buy a house for about 3,000 pounds, you know, 5,000. Hans, how much were you expecting that check should read? Well, my wife had better education than what I did, and she calculated all the years I've done, that's on my part, I should have got about £7,000. And what was the cheque you were handed? How much money was it for? £28, mate. 28 uh, Not £2,800, £28. Pounds. No, £28, yeah. And £28. Pounds. What did, can you remember the conversation you had? With the sergeant? Yeah, what did you say? Oh, I said, well, this is all I'm getting. You know, after all those years, I've worked over 10 years, you know, more. All those roving trips I've done about 12, 15 roving trips to Mariva from the Cape, you know. There should have been plenty of money. That my wife calculated, brought tears to me, I said. She cried, eh? She said, this can't be true. He said, well, that's all you got. Did they ever explain where that money went? They said you only had £28. Did did they explain where all of the extra no, money had no, gone? Did no, they say no. you've, you'd you drawn it out or anything like that? A few times we'd draw out when we went to the races, you know, in Cooktown races and rural races. You were allowed £5 for the whole week. Either you got it from the police station... So, Hans Pearson, you have this conversation, you're given the cheque for £28, you leave in tears, but you don't give up. What spurred you to walk into that lawyer's office decades later and say, I think that there should be something done about this? 
Well, to tell you the truth, you know, in uh, 2002 when we got that 7,000... The Queensland government had a reparation. Yep, yep. yep. And uh, the wife was thinking we'd get more, you know, at least 20, 30, but no. So she said to me, oh, this is unjust, you know. You know oh, she was real mad. <coughs> and uh, then at the time she said to me, I know a lawyer in Cairns might be able to help us. And I said, nah, we got no money to fund anything like that. We're poor people. We, we can't fund all that. So we never done nothing till 2007. He said to me, now, there's a solicitor in Cairns we must see. His name's John Bottom. And I said, all right, to satisfy your mind, on our way up to Cook and help her, we pulled up there at Bottoms, and when I said, John, and he said, listen, I can't help you, Hans, he said, that because I'm doing the same action from Yarraba, the Aikman blog. He's going in for this uh, stolen wages too, see? And I said, all right, he said, if Anyway, I'll photo photocopy all your documents. You know, lucky I, my son picked it up on Palm. My documents and my wife's documents, the working documents. Yeah. So he, he photocopies them and then he sits on them for a while, does he? He, he sat on them then, and and uh, and eventually, uh, my, in the meantime, in 90, 2009, I lost my wife, and he rang me five years ago. He said, you want to go on with this class action? I said, mate, it was my wife's idea, really. You know, and I said, I don't think I'll bother. He said, mate, we got litigation more from Sydney going to lend us this money for this class claim, you know. And he wanted to put you as the lead claim. He felt like your case was an absolute lay-down misere to show people that there had been a, a gross injustice done. Exactly, mate. Yeah. few times there over the years, I thought, no, we're bumping our head up against Rick, Rick Stone. You know, Stone and Brick. I said, oh, yes. But anyway, we have persevered and here we are today. You here know. we are today. How did you feel when you heard that they had, that the government had come back to the table and wanted to settle for $190 million, not just well, for, it, for you, but for about 7,000 other people? Well, it brought tears in my eyes, eh? Oh, yes. Justice being done, you know, not only for me, for my people, the rest of my people, yeah. Do we know what the Queensland government did with all that money? Has anyone ever figured it out? <laughs> well, they reckon, I don't know. If, yeah, it, it is true, like what this kid was saying to and Most of our money went to the roads, main roads and hospitals the government built out of our money. Injustice been done, you know. Yeah. And they say we, you know, don't know where all the money went. The floods damaged the uh, documents and all that in Brisbane, I don't know. But anyway, it's all over now. It's all I over guess. now. We're hearing from uh, Hans Pearson, 80 years old. He lives in Townsville these days, but he was born at Cape Bedford near Hopevale. He grew up in Hopevale, spent some time in Warrabinda back to Hopevale, and then worked on Cape York cattle stations. For about 10 years, Hans reckons he was not paid properly. He, he estimates he earned about £7,000 worth of money between the 50s and 60s, which he was hoping to use to buy a house for his young family. But when he went to collect what he was owed from the government, he was given a cheque for £28. And this injustice, many decades later, has sparked a class action by... Over 7,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are claimant to this class action. The, the Queensland government settled uh, for $190 million. Um, Hans Pearson, that money uh, to you now, is it probably uh, nowhere near as meaningful as it would have been to you as a young man? Is it in some ways too little, too late? Too little, too late, mate, yeah. Too little, too late, but something, you know, something. At least we got getting something out of it, you know. No, I thank the Queensland government for what they've done, although it's not this mob that stole the money, you know. How proud do you reckon your wife would be? Oh, Jingo, she would have been over the moon, eh? She would have been bloody jumping up and down, yeah. Yeah, it was her idea. If it wasn't for her, you know, <laughs> I don't think this would have happened.